All right, then. Back upstairs we go. We have made contact with the locals who are, of course, spooky ghosts. Spooky, spooky ghosts. Maybe they know the password. One can hope. Hi. Uh, do you live at the top of the furnace inside the furnace? This tray is full of dice. Colorful polyhedral dice. Hundreds of them. The candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. Okay. Hello, I'm Nia. A bird-like woman sits on a throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Melius. She taps on her headphones. So what kind of die are you looking for? Visual calculus. She's got a direct view up to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Hold on, what do you mean by Milius? Yes, a Milius is like a calling station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. He pats the headphones on the table. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Encyclopedia. Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident, does that count? No, I was l looking for something else. Answers. Answers? How strange. These days people only come to me for dice and role-playing games. I'm not sure how helpful I'll be, but go ahead and ask. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. Conceptualization. It's almost as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shelves like stalagmites. Drama. No falsehoods are present. She's a novelty dice maker and doesn't have anything to, to hide. Ask what you need. How'd you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. It was I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Do you like role-playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role-players, as customers, they're nice people. Rhetoric. Some of those nice people have big bucks to spend on novelty items. What do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? Nothing, really. I didn't know him. The lieutenant looks at his notebook, then the woman onto the large window. Your window looks directly into the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything until last Sunday evening? I mean, unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the Whirling's backyard. She stops to try to come up with an example. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, 
Uh, lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. Drama. She's heard of the murder, but did not see it, sire. She looks up at the window. Pale light comes in. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. Do you often work on Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people, but I like it. And I prefer doing this to sitting at home. And you never took your eyes off the work to look out the window. I might have, she admits. But in this case, all I could have seen would have been my own reflection staring back from the darkness. Visual calculus. It's light here, but dark in the yard at, at night. It's really hard to make out anything in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I really get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. I see. Thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? Hey, where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. What did I get? Oh, it's a journal update. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Creative. The lieutenant looks around in the spacious room, its ceiling fading into shadows above. Yeah, we need to, we need to discuss the curse. Reaction speed. When she arrived here, there was no room anywhere else. She must have known the other businesses. Do you know what happened to the other tenants? Everyone else is gone. More or less. She adjusts the yellow scarf that covers her hair. Are you interested in anyone specific? Logic. Oh, quite a lot of them spring to mind. I mean, the most obvious one we gotta get to. Where is it? Wait, what? Hair salon, gym, broken windows, stuffed animals, mannequins, rotor blades, strange machine. That might be it. Terrifying taxidermied bear. Buildings intercom. No mention of the tabletop group, which is the number one thing I want to ask about. What's with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chief executive took off on vacation with all their money. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending, uh, still sending out holiday transmissions from Tallulah or to, uh, Tio Motiri or Kashkor uh, or wherever he is. Interesting. What do these transmissions say? The usual, I imagine. That he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them, or just as soon as he returns. Her smile widens, but uh, before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. The man is stern. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All the remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. Logic. They were just props. Why return to them? Interfacing. Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No. Wait. Forget it. It would take too long. There used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes. I think it was called Androgynous Orlando, or something similar. They, w they weren't a big hit around here. Turns out the working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. <laughs> They're scared of that word. 
Oh, how easily men are intimidated. Conceptualization. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. Composure. It's not about the haircut, it's about the confidence. I would never let anyone androgynous touch my hair. <laughs> I guess I'm a simple man. I don't really have opinions on hairstyles. Me neither. I just want it off my face. She tucks a, st a strand of hair under her headscarf. What happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym. It was our Timitaps Boxing Club. A community project created to steer at-risk youths away from drugs and crime. Maybe that's what Kuno needs, a community-centric boxing club. Hmm. Kuno. Her eyes narrow in the dim light. Who's Kuno? He's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out of the window, her face reflecting back in the dark. I think it will take more than a gym to help that kid. And who was our Temetep? A kind man. From... <laughs> from Siemsk. Maybe. That's a hell of a name. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym. It was his, his way of giving back. And how'd the community project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amph amphetamines. Logic. It's not really full of that. No one would store their drugs like that. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. She sighs. There used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff milieus. Who would have guessed? Encyclopedia. Hmm. What's a snuff milieu? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway. And I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Cool. Cool. Very cool about the debris. But what's a snuff mil- a snuff milieu? Milo? It's a Sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people get- pay good money to get off on it. Wow. Drama. Nothing changes in her tone as she says that, as if it's just another piece of information to lay out for the world. Don't worry. The ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed subrosas. The lieutenant turns to you. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. Then she lets the thought go. Jesus Christ. That's wildly distressing. A radio station that murders people on air, basically. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Anything else? Found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years until the insect rights activists came. I didn't know insects had any rights or activists. Yeah, the Atelier didn't know e either. They produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made of in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are a big in the Occident. Activists shut down the biggest chitin suppliers. 
which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin, in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. But insects don't have any brains or feelings. Actually, insects do have brains, she corrects you. But yes, I understand what you're saying. I think the pro protesters took it a little too far. Perception. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. Legs up. They're not moving. Anything else? I, f I found with the... That's strange phrasing, right? Oh well. I found with the strange machine. Fortress accident. The radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiral. Conceptualization. That's understandable. Fantasies are serious things. The mind is the drawing board of history. They certainly took their their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear them chit-chat behind the curtains on a cigarette break. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Drama. She sounds almost mocking when she says that. <clears throat> From what I've seen so far, the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money starts to run out, and they just began to complain about how a lot about capitalism, you know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they didn't, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up on, to work on time. That's too bad. I would have supported them. The project looked great. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. She tosses a pair of dice on the table. One of them stops near the edge of the metallic disc. So there were Tim Schafer's. Perception. It's easy. The result is one on a 20-sided dice. Oh no. A, a natural, a natural uh, crit fail. There was a terrifying taxidermied bear in the cellar. Oh boy. The fabled Revicola Ice City. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now, ask me about their other ideas. Indeed, what other ideas? <clears throat> All right, what, what are the other ideas? What about the other ideas? There was really just one, and it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them up to 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to distribute their bored magazine browsing. Hey, that sounds familiar. She leans back, disapproving. Brit does the same thing. Thanks, Reaction Speed. I know a girl just like that. She works in Fritz as a cashier, and she's not particularly friendly. Employing sulky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. I'm talking about acne-ridden girl friends and gorilla-like boy friends loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Revacoli City. And they already had the bear. She closes her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? 
the bear, she repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples, like trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out? Of course not, the bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by hostile apex predator. To make something, to make matters worse, the fridge didn't work out too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Revicoli City lost a price war to its rival, Glassy 5000. Glassy 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only five cents a piece, out of regular regular fridges. I'm sure the bear was doing its best. Maybe. Because the taxidermist who made that bear definitely wasn't. Doing his best, I mean. How come? He said the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on des desiccants. He called it Megatherion. Sounds cool. Electrochemistry. Why is everyone doing drugs in this place? Even the taxidermists. Megatherion. Megatherion, nods the dice maker. A mega wild beast. What's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life. By telling you to do more drugs, mostly. I don't have a comment on drugs. Understandable. You shouldn't do them, nods the dice maker. You're a police officer, after all. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad, finishing the story. Shivers. The temperature has dropped in the cover in the cover of night. You see frost in the windows. It is getting dark, isn't it? Yeah, it's eight o'clock at night now already. Like it's we're reaching the end of my first day. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. I found the building's intercom, but it's not working. Oh, right. She rubs her forehead. Her scarf was has left a faint line on her dusky skin. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of the doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. Logic. The doorbell with the empty name card must belong to her, then. Ah, that's one of the only ones I tried. What did I hear when I tried to call it? Or did I hear anything? I'm gonna take a drink of water. There were so many options. I guess that was all foreshadowing. Uh, all the all the options on the list, which I kind of skimmed through, were all foreshadowing the many, 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 many individual places I have now found the ruins of, and am now hearing the stories of, funnily enough. And yeah, I guess the I think the only ones I tried were I tried the first one, which was the bookstore lady, which I did get through on, and then I tried this one, I think, which was the only other one that had a person in it. I somehow managed to magically only pick the two options that had people in them, if I remember correctly. That's kind of funny. So you're telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. I have a few more questions about the building. Sure, I'm listening. I have more questions about the intercom. No, I don't. I hope I clarified things up a bit. What else? I heard that this place is cursed. Did you know that people call it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, she nods, as the wind howls from the furnace shaft above, but I don't think these stories are true. So how do you explain what happened to all the companies then? It's just capitalism, she shrugs. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. This is where I turn directly to the camera and say, Why, yes! <laughs> That's exactly how YouTube works. See, 
this let's play thing seems pretty easy to do, right? And also, it sure seems like all these people are doing really well at it, right? Because you can only ever see the people who are doing well at it because the algorithm pushes the people who are already successful to some extent towards you in increasingly, in, well, increasing numbers, which is why you will just, people like PewDiePie just kind of find their way into your, into your suggestions from time to time without even you showing interest in them, for example, because they're just top of the top and all that. Uh, but... Like, I, back, I, I, I took years and years to get absolutely anywhere at all with any of this. And, like, I used to be a regular on the r slash let's play subreddit. And the turnover was astonishing. Like, every single day there was dozens of posts in that area back when I was looking in there. People trying to get their name out there. People trying to seek feedback. It was all kind of stupid because... Uh, the last place you should be looking for to, like, uh, advertise your channel would be in the place where, you know, everyone else is trying to advertise their channel. That just means everyone's posting their shit and nobody's actually looking at anyone else's shit. Which is why that, while I was there, a rule was eventually in installed where nobody could post their shit. And it was more about a, being a resource where you could ask questions and try to network or uh, figure out how various things work about like what are the rules with uh, doing let's plays or like how should you, how do you improve your content and so on and so forth. Still not great. Uh, I got really tired of giving people feedback pretty quickly because people generally just want to hear, they just want to get hugged essentially. Uh, a lot of people that do that get into this into YouTubing just want to think that they're actually doing everything all right and that the system's just biased against them and that there's it's just no fair. Uh, like it's just ah, oh, the market's oversaturated or it's just ah, oh, it's too late to get into it now or ah, oh, it's just impossible to get your feet off the, to it's just impossible to get off the ground because it's just so hard to get started. So you kind of need a boost from an outside source or that 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 like there's an endless litany of excuses that people would use to deflect any forms of criticism because it couldn't be them. They couldn't be just not making interesting content or not saying interesting things or not being funny or not having good quality audio or whatever. It had to be that uh, they're being cheated some way, way or the people who are successful are there for illegitimate mean reasons. And that they're just as good, and so on. And, you know... Credit where credit's due, there are some people out there who just don't have anywhere near where, what they should for what, they're, what they pull off on a regular basis, and... Uh, the top of the top of, like, successful people in media, in all formats, are not the people who are the best at it, or do are putting out the best stuff or anything, but, uh... Yeah, in my experience, the, a lot of the times, it's just because they were putting out really bad stuff. Uh, in fact, Andrew and I, we hosted Unsucky Sunday, which was the th weekly thing that would happen uh, where you, uh, everyone would put in their submissions and there would be a declared winner each week of just basically what was the best videos. The le it was called Unsucky because the implication was that everybody there sucks. And so what are the, mo what are the five most unsuckiest videos? And then... Uh, one of the winner, one of those five people would be selected to host the next week. So since we won, I uh, we went and hosted the next week, and huh, what fucking dreck! <laughs> we got hundreds of submissions to pour through, so we split it down the middle, and each did half of them. And we were definitely skimming them because, like, you could not watch these videos in their entirety, both because of the sheer number that were submitted and because most of them were unwatchable. Uh, I found some gen. I, we found some actual gems, some genuinely entertaining things, but the sheer tiny percentage of them that were even vaguely okay was uh, a problem. Like it's just a real problem. So yeah, it's a uh, it's it's easy to come up with excuses for why things are going the way they are, and this is an example of that. It's easy like. All these closed shops and all these other things, it's easy for someone to come up with the idea that, oh, it must be a curse. A horrible calamity has befallen all of these shops, and that's the real reason why they've all failed. Because uh, it's an outside thing, and they were all poor, misbegotten individuals that have been uh, struck down by fate. And uh, then you add in the fact that the, the only per new... Especially now, the only legitimate person that actually owns any property in this building, because this person's just kind of a squatter as far as I can tell, uh, is the bookstore lady, and she is, uh... 
She buys into a lot of really stupid things that are very dumb and wrong. Like she probably would blow. She she. I mean, she she basically has a section of homeopathy, but she thinks that Eastern magic's gonna protect her from curses and all that. <sighs> So if you, she's the perfect target to believe in that kind of curse thing. But the real thing is two other answers that are not a curse. One answer is what the very long thing we've spent this entire episode exploring, which is <clears throat> each individual, one of those uh, people and projects has its own individual backstory about exactly what went on with each of them. And a lot of them are the folly of the creator themselves, or a mistake, or, you know, sometimes there were unfortunate uh, circumstances or some bad luck, but definitely not any sort of insane outcomes that would imply any kind of curse. It's definitely just a bunch of failed ventures. But on the other, on the other hand, though, there's the other darker element, which is just capitalism. See, if you want to point out a curse here, some kind of unifying force that points out why all of these people failed, well, then you'd ha the only force you can really point out that actually exists would be some element of capitalism and not a curse. It's like, it's that these people need to fight to survive and to succeed in a market, and if they are deemed unworthy, they are struck down by a said market. That's the curse. It's, it's just the forces of capitalism, which is unfortunate. There's a darkness there. On some level, you can say, you can see some of these people and think like, eh, well, I mean, they were just, they were kind of unworthy, right? They had bad ideas and they kind of deserved to fail. But on the other hand, the darkness is that like, you know, they still deserve to people to some extent. And the, de the downside of capitalism and how it handles these kinds of people is that when you get struck down in this kind of way, you just don't have money now. <laughs> and if you can't figure out how to pick yourself back up at now, it, what, in what is now an even worse situation than where you started, uh, you gotta figure out how you're gonna put food on the table and how you're gonna sleep indoors and so on. And if you can't figure that out under a time limit, then you will be punished severely. And that's some rough shit. But yeah, this whole thing where you only hear about success <clears throat> you don't remember how don't realize how many things fail. Yeah, everything from private businesses to YouTube channels to Actors like it's always the joke that Los Angeles is full of just Countless like hundreds or th well not hundreds thousands and thousands of like waiters and other workers that are all like as aspiring actors because Everyone goes to Los Angeles to be an actor and of course only a minority of them actually get to go anywhere with that so you don't but you can't appreciate the sheer scale scale of the people who do, who fail, which is why people keep falling into the trap continuously of traveling there, seeking that career. There's a lot of aspects to this that come up. Biosense is the one who sent me. She's convinced the place is swarming with malicious energies. Biosense, the bookshop lady? She raises her brows. I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energies spared her somehow? Actually, the bookstore isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers and she has to exploit her own daughter to keep the company going. Alright. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in rags? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Hold on, the whirling is part of the Doom commercial area? You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time under the East Delta Commerce Center project. Yeah, I mean, it was on the same weird intercom or or doorbell system, that's, which I stood at, that stood out at the beginning. It was weird. Well, the whirling isn't doing well either. Its waitress just took off and customers have trouble paying bills, I say, about myself. And then there's me, she sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there, scattered, from knives to carving fly flies to wire cutters. 
I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? Drama. Maybe it's just because she's so talented she's been able to woo the curse. Playsense thinks it's because you're the source of it. A, ma a malignant entity. Malignant entity? What does that even mean? The dice maker laughs. Some kind of sorceress? What about you, officer? Do you think I'm the malignant entity? I'm starting to th I'm starting to see that there is no curse. Only business decisions and natural market fluctuations. Exactly. She pinches the root of her nose. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. But I'm glad that we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? Drama. That's all she has to say on the subject. She's been thorough and truthful as far as I can, we can see. But why hasn't her business failed? You feel nothing. If anything, it's uncomfortably warm in here. <clears throat> Start taking off your clothes? No, Jesus Christ. Shivers, you need to chill out. I have more questions about the building. Do I, though? No, I don't. You lied to me. Okay, I'd like to order a dice from you. Of course. She nods. This is what she's here for. Tell me what you have in mind. So we can ask for a Viral Untethered setting. Cursed dice. Extraordinary. I don't know. Just normal, very regular. What do you think fits my personality? I wonder if getting a Viral Untethered dice might give us the solution in some way to the puzzle of the password. Do you have any Viral Untethered setting? Or do you know the Viral Untethered setting? I want a dice for that. Ah, yes. Fortress accident. She shakes her head lightly. It's too bad they never finished their game. The Viral and Tethered dice is a variation of a standard role-playing die. Only instead of plants, it uses motifs of ice and death. And loss, of course. Conceptualization. Ice. Death. Loss. Sounds like you. I'm thinking something made from alligator jawbone, cast in black resin. The reptile bone is as white as ice and dead as, well, death. She smiles. For seven real, it could have been, it could, I could have it ready in eight hours. What's a standard role-playing die? It's an Ico Cite, <laughs> Ico, Ico, Ico Cite Trahedron. It, that's a lot. <laughs> a 24-sided die that can produce results for a 2-sided, 3-sided, 4-sided, 6-sided, and 12-sided dice with a single roll. Technically, you can also use it for many other sizes, but you may need to re-roll results. Loving it, so nifty. Why well, I need to cast it in resin? Untreated bone is porous and prone to chipping. Cast it in something hard like resin, though, and voila! It's perfect. Hmm. Maybe I should get a different one. Maybe I have some other ideas for dice. What kind of die do you think fits my personality? I think I have just the right one for you. She opens the top drawer of her work desk and takes something out. Two polyhedrons, red and blue, are cradled in her palm. Uh, I don't get it. You're a police officer, right? Here, catch. She tosses you the dice. They're a gift from me. A beautiful woman tossing you a gift. Whatever you do, don't overthink it. <laughs> catch the dice. Oh god, don't fuck it up. Hey! That was gonna not be a great feel. Siren's dice. 
Mr. Smooth Moves, you snatch the dice out of the air with one hand, just like you're in a movie. Say nothing, act like you've done this a thousand times. What are the odds? The dice maker gives you a warm smile. The red one is made of bloodstone, with a lapis lazuli inlay, and the blue one is the inverse. Think of them as your lucky charm, officer. She smiles at you. She smiled! You truly are, Mr. Smooth Moose. You'll definitely need luck in Martinez. She closes her desk drawer. Was there anything else? I think that's it for now. I don't think I have reason to want dice necessarily, and that's a lot of money to invest in them. Considering I only recently even got this much. Hell, at last episode I had like one Real. <laughs> <clears throat> That's a fun idea. Icosahedral dice set. Sirens. <clears throat> These two 20 side dice have the colors of a police alarm. Bloodstone for red, lapis lazuli for blue. If you roll them and squint your eyes, squint your eyes, it looks like you're arriving on the scene and it's raining. Note, look at the map tab in your journal to see which white checks have opened. What? White checks have opened? So those on white are available to try now. So the mirror. Men of Hyamdal series. Sleeping dock worker. No. The map wall. But that was for stealing, wasn't it? The warded door? Hmm. A lot of them are ones I don't necessarily have reason to want to try. Like the barbell. Right, if I zoom out I'll be able to move faster. Well that was fun. She seems nice. And not nearly as mysterious and monstrous as somebody else was expecting. Well, I currently think that I'm on my way to being done with this place. So I feel like I should probably just unplug these things. If nothing else, they're eating up somebody else's power. Unplug the giant red cable. An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. Unplug the black cable. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? It's black. It's not like it's the red one. The lieutenant raises his brows but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. One cable missing? I thought it was two cable missings. What? Why wouldn't I unplug both of them at this point? Also, maybe I can open this now? Gotta crack open the lid. I need a super pry bar. Good point. I'm not even using the pry bar right now. That is not a good chance of success. So the machine being unplugged does, does give you a higher chance. Better grip with gloves. But we do need to seem we do seem to need a super pry bar. Huh? No. The ice squeaks. What? 
Did you read that one already? Yeah. The ice squeaks beneath the pry bar. You think you've got the bar jammed in there pretty well, but the lid simply won't budge. You see the pry bar's metal handle bending right before your very eyes. That's a good pry- that's a good pry bar. I'm not criticizing it. But this ice cream maker is frozen shut. It takes an advanced tool to get it open. Advanced? Where do we get one? I have no idea, officer. This ice cream maker isn't important enough to requisition a special tool. Sooner or later you will stumble upon a tool mighty enough. Then we will know what's inside the mysterious ice cream maker. Shit. Oh, is it noticeably broken now? Should I feel sad? No. Nope. We're perhaps okay right now. Somewhere in the dark, a giant electric mammal stirs delight. Eh. Oopsie. Oh well. We were unsuccessful at trying to <clears throat> get it open. I'm just gonna leave things as they are for now. There was the vague suggestion that something inside there was something that might be destroyed if I if it's allowed to lose its cooling. So I'm kind of a, a, I'm I'm somewhat concerned about leaving it unattended for any for any big amount of time and you know. Maybe forgetting about it for a couple days or something, and then like it, the thing inside gets broken. I don't know. It seemed to heavily suggest I'm going to find something. You guys are still open. It's almost nine o'clock. I should stop using this flashlight like a lunatic. There we go. I want to shine it in people's faces. <clears throat> You're alive and well. Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? In that dark sarcophagus. The dark sarcophagus. Pause dramatically. Yes, yes, how was it? Rama, tell her how ghastly it was. You know it's what she wants to hear. Honestly, a dump. Nothing to see there, just heaps of garbage. Someone should let the sun shine in. But what else did you find? Did anything survive? No, of course not. Have you located the entity? I talked to the entity you told me about. Her name is Neha and she's a novelty dice maker. A novelty dice maker? Her eyes widen. Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. She's not a sorceress or some malicious entity. She's a businesswoman like you. She looks perplexed. I don't understand. If it's not her, then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? Logic. The narrative she's built herself, and does need tearing down. Composure. She's squeezing on the pendant too tight, a drop of blood in her palm. Jesus Christ. Drama. To hell with it. Perchance you ought to just lie, sire? Oh no, what if I do a bad job? <clears throat> she says it's just capitalism. Bankruptcy is a quirk of our economic system. Wait, what? Her fa entire face goes white as a skull. The entire economic system is cursed? Oh no. Oh no. These, these these options are all over the place. You can say I'm afraid that would that the only 
I'm afraid that only world revolution can help you. Or, yes, the system must be cleansed of immigrant labor. It's true. We live in precarious world. A precarious world. Uh, nothing ever turns out right. You need to get used to chaos. Or, what I meant was, I found the source of the doom. Forget about the economy thing. <laughs> uh. It's true. We live in a precarious world. Nothing ever turns out right. You need to get used to chaos. Precarious world? Economy? She looks down at the pendant in her trembling hands. I understand what's going on here. You went in there, rummaged around and accomplished nothing, and now you're telling me these intellectual things to cover up for it. Uh... She clutches her pendant so tightly that it draws blood because it gives her security. She, in this one thing, if she can tell herself this narrative, she gives herself a version of the world that she feels like she can control, or at least understand in a sort of way, because she didn't really think that she could uh, control the curse, but she had certainty in it. And certainty is way better than, uh, well, reality usually, but that's unfortunately certainty is, is uh, a cheat. It's okay. You don't have to. I was wrong to trust another person. I will manage this psychic calamity as I always have, alone, on my own. No. She tucks the pendant away in her blouse and concludes, Thank you for nothing. Please do buy some books or be on your way. Wow. Total psychic collapse between you two right now. There was never any other way this could have gone. She's just too far gone into her own mind. I am sorry we had to disappoint you, ma'am. He turns to you. Can we go now? Farewell for now, book peddler. Aww. Not wrong, though. She is pretty far gone. It's kind of hard to reconcile this level of, uh... <sighs> But we gave it a go, and we got to check out a bunch of cool places and encounter a cool, uh, dice maker lady and swap some stories for a few hours. That was still fun. It just didn't am amount to what we thought it might. And hey, got another skill point. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I do like Encyclopedia. Let's plop a point into there for now. Well, that's probably it. Not sure what else I would do here, right? The pissing competition. Right, that's the two factions being unhappy with each other. No. I'm probably done here. Uh, does this game have a... Ooh, these numbers are going up right now, right? I have seven good, bad cops. What? Good cop, bad cop, seven. I don't know what that means. It's weird. So I also still don't know my name, apparently. Huh. I think these numbers have changed since last time I looked at them. Communist three, fascist zero, ultra liberal one, moralist one. Hmm. I think the ultra-liberal might have been me talking about market forces as chaos as opposed to just going straight for trying to tell the confused ghost lady about seizing the, the means of production. Because <laughs> liberalism is often conflated rightfully with being pro-capitalism. Uh, this coin-operated viewer has been banged up. Inoperable. I will spend an absolute eternity poking around this map, aren't I? Like, look, look at how much there is. There must be a way to, uh, to sleep eventually, right? 
Uh, I, I vaguely feel like a tutorial might have come up at some point, kind of introducing the idea of sleeping. But I don't necessarily remember when... ...or what. I'm not supposed to- I'm not supposed to be able to go back into the whirling. Because, uh, I'm not sp yeah. I'm not, uh... uh... They don't want me there anymore because of all the not paying them that I've been doing. Two roundabout north. <clears throat> Cape Side Apartments, Martinez Pier. The ad reads, broken window. Tibbs has windows. <laughs> if you had a bag in your hand, perhaps you could collect these bottles and sell them. They're leaning heavy on this idea of being able to sell. <clears throat> sell your bottles. I guess you can take part in recycling manually to make some money. Kind of a, a novel little thing to include in, an, in your RPG. Coin-operated viewer. This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. Poor little viewer. Pat it. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. Oh, cool. I'm glad it's in our body. Vandalism. Shake head. Probably some kids. The lieutenant inspects the rigged, the rigged slot. Interfacing. A simple but clever solution to ruining a coin-operated viewer. It took ingenuity. Look inside. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word O-N-U-C written on the other side. The N and C scribbled backwards. Nah. <laughs> That's Kuno on the lens. Thanks, Logic. Shift your focus to the background. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and grays appears. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete reed and reeds. On it, a church of stilts, lanky, weather-worn weather wooden planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. A church on stilts. Encyclopedia. You know this to be the star of Pericarnassus, or the Chi Ro. The central symbol of the Paracanassian Church. A star. A great moral height to be strived towards. Perception. Around the large wooden building you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach. And a small tent set up on the ice. We're getting hints at what it looks like way over there. A church on stilts. Yeah, I guess I can see it. Keeps it out of the water's range, I suppose. Kuno really just has, like, an area of goddamn influence, doesn't he? 